Good morning, evening, afternoon, whatever time of day it is where you're at. Welcome to Collider Dailies. I'm John Aldrich, and I'm joined by not my usual person. It's <laughs> Sam. Hi. Sam, how are you doing today? I'm doing great. How are you? Uh, you know, I'm tired. But then again, <laughs> I'm always tired. So that's like, that's nothing new. Are you excited to be like on dailies? Oh, totally. I feel like tired is the default state right now for yeah. everyone. <laughs> I mean... Yeah, doing what we do for a living, we spend a lot of a lot of time that we are supposed to not be working. Like the time that we're supposed <laughs> to be off is still spent working. It's just the nature of working in journalism, I feel like, especially entertainment journalism. Uh, but yeah, so Sam, Sam and I are gonna be talking about a whole bunch of stuff today. We're gonna be talking about uh Star Trek Discovery because Sam has actually seen season five, and so she's gonna be giving our thoughts on that. Uh, we're gonna be taking a look at Jennifer Lopez's new Netflix movie, Atlas. We got a trailer for it. We're gonna give kind of our thoughts on that trailer. But first, we're gonna be talking about Venom 3, or should I say Venom? The Last Dance, because we have a title for Venom 3 now, and it is, as I said, The Last Dance. But in addition to that, we also have a new release date. It is being released slightly earlier than it was originally. It will be hitting theaters now, October 25th, 2024. Sam, I so I don't actually know if you're like at all much of a superhero film kind of person, but are you excited at all for Venom 3? I would say I'm a I'm a casual superhero watcher, and I am excited for Venom three because I I like the Venom movies. Um, I'd say Spider Man is probably my favorite superhero if I had to pick one. So I enjoy the the Spider Verse movies, the um, connected properties kind of thing. Yeah. Any any foray so, into the Spider Man world is is always good for me. So with that being said. Obviously, Venom The Last Dance is, is going to be the next kind of piece of the Sony universe of Spider-Man characters or whatever the heck that universe is called. I think it's actually called the Sony Spider-Man universe, which is weird because the universe doesn't have a Spider-Man yet. But regardless, <laughs> it, that universe has been a little bit of a train wreck. I think that's pretty safe to say. Morbius wasn't great. Madam Web was... Madam Web... Do you foresee Venom 3 doing anything to sort of right that ship, maybe save it from the nosedive that the universe is taking currently? I think that Venom 3 will be a good... It, like I think it'll be a good movie. And I think it'll be a good end to that trilogy. I don't know how it can necessarily help the rest of the universe. Um, just because I I haven't seen, admittedly, Morbius or Madame Web. Um, <laughs> You're not missing much. <laughs> I do want to see Madame Web. I think that I will have a very silly time. Um, it is, it, I will say, I do think that I enjoyed Madame Web more than I did Morbius. Maybe I'm just weird, but. Uh, as a, as a, person who uh prefers women in my um everything uh i think i will also enjoy Web a little bit more um although you know morbius had weird dancing matt smith which was a, a highlight I mean, you can't moment, really go wrong, that wrong with matt smith uh you can <laughs> <laughs> I'm not I'm not the biggest uh 11 <laughs> fan in the world but that's just me. Uh feel like I'm going to get some haters on that. I didn't hate him, but that's just I, that's me. Eleven's pretty great. Eh, I'd say 12 I was I was, a, <laughs> I was a 10 man personally. Oh yeah. 9 and 10 cuz they're basically the same. Uh <laughs> Well, it's all the Anyways, same yeah. So Venom 3 moved up the release date, got a title. Outside of that, we don't know a ton about this film. It's still a ways off, so just, you know, keep on Collider.com and we'll update you with any information as it comes along. Uh, speaking of movies that are coming out, uh, this one is actually going to be coming out slightly sooner, uh, actually in May. And that is Atlas, a new sci-fi thriller from Netflix starring Jennifer Lopez and Simu Liu. Uh, yeah, we watched the trailer this morning and I have some thoughts. Uh <laughs> 
the trailer didn't really give us a ton. It was basically, it was less a trailer. And at least to me, it felt like it was like a preview clip or like a sequence from yeah, the piece. Of... Yeah. Yeah. Uh, but it, it has a vibe to it that I'm kind of here for, but it does feel a little bit generic. If that makes any sense. Yeah. How, how did you feel about it? I, I felt like it feels a little bit like Moonfall adjacent, which I enjoyed Moonfall for the campy ridiculousness of it, but I don't know if that's their intention to be campy. What was the name of that Tom Cruise site? Oblivion? Mm, it kind of, yeah, yeah, yeah. like, when, when I first started watching it, it sort of gave me that kind of vibe a little bit. But then as soon as she was, like, crashing the weird mech thing on the planet... Yeah, Moonfall kind of hit me a little bit with that. It was, I don't know. It's it's a little weird. I'm a little I'm a little up in the air on this one. I am tentatively excited about it. Um, I have I have a few movies that I like really love Jennifer Lopez in. Like Shelly Dance is one of my favorites, like of all time. Um, and I really enjoyed Hustlers and. But then I also recently watched her new like visual album thing. And this sort of has that same quality like visually, mm -hmm. I feel like. Um, but I hope that the storytelling will be a little bit more coherent. I like we were talking a little bit about this before the show. And as I said, I don't think that I have seen a Jennifer Lopez movie since Made in Manhattan. Uh, which that was like 2006, seven, something like that. So it's been a while since I've even thought about Jennifer Lopez. Uh, but you know, this, this looks interesting enough that I will probably watch it. Am I going to be sitting there waiting for May 24th, right? Yep. May 24th. Uh, am I going to be sitting there waiting patiently for May 24th? Uh, yeah. May in Manhattan was 2000. <laughs> was way off from what i thought uh am i gonna be waiting for may 24th with bated breath no probably not but will i catch it the following week or something like that yeah probably when i find some free time and i have you know nothing else better to do i'll i'll watch atlas what about you do you think do you think this is something that you're gonna actually watch uh outside of like maybe if work makes you watch it <laughs> <laughs> no I, I i will probably check it out i i enjoy like having a little like movie night once a week um, and I think it'll it'll join the rotation. Um, I I am a huge sci-fi fan. I love sci-fi, and I love female-fronted sci-fi in particular is like my favorite type of sci-fi. Um, yeah, exactly. Um, so yeah, I think that I will check it out for sure. Speaking of female-fronted sci-fi, that's actually a great segue into mm -hmm. our final topic of the day. So you recently reviewed for the website uh, Star Trek Discovery Season 5. It is the final season of the show. Uh, and knowing that you were going to be on this episode, I figured it'd be a great opportunity to have you come on here and give your thoughts on the season, which is going to be coming out. It's coming out in April, correct? Yes, April 4th. April 4th. Yes, that was, that is correct. So got a little bit of time, but you can give like a general, like spoiler free, kind of like your, your basic thoughts hit me with, uh, like your, your back of the box review, like the blurb that they would put on the Blu-ray to start us uh, off. All right. Um, so season five is a kicks off with an exciting treasure hunt um adventure and the relationships are engaging and the stakes are high and you're going to be looking for as many easter eggs as the crew are looking for clues hmm. so let's let's dive into the crew a little bit because i feel like that's one of discovery's strongest points uh so one of the as i said one of the major things about discovery is the crew and that is it is you have a whole team of like very beloved people do is there anything like majorly wrong about the way that they are presented in season five or anything about the way that season five presents them that didn't sit right with you or on the flip side of that was there anything that season five did with the characters that you really loved 
I am really pleased with how season five is handling the characters so far. Um, the dynamics feel really rich and it feels like the, the characters are, and their dynamics between each other are driving the story as much as the season's overall plot, which is, I think, really important to keep in mind, especially in a sci-fi show, because sometimes the plot can drive the characters, and I think that takes away from why I'm watching. Yeah. Um, and I feel like season five is doing a good job of of keeping those relationships true to what I would expect from them. Um, there's a really good... I won't... I'm not going to spoil anything, obviously, um, but there's a, and the fourth episode is probably one of my favorites of the series. Um, mm -hmm. and it allows Michael some really cool, like, um, perspective on how far she's come and how much she's built these relationships with the people. Good. I'm glad to hear that. Yeah. Uh, so uh so with this being the final season of the show an important thing to think about is does this feel like a satisfying way for the show to be ending to you or does it feel like it's kind of like mm, this is like a left off hanging thread kind of deal i actually knowing that they i'm i'm fairly certain that they didn't know it was going to be the final scene with, or the final season when they started. I um, believe that is correct. Yeah. However, I am really impressed with how much it seems to like bring things full circle and stitch discovery into like other bits of the franchise. And um, I, I, I'm impressed with the like level of full circleness and like, um, connectedness that I got from the first four episodes. Uh, I think fans are going to have a really fun time uh, with it. And I think that like, it is a treasure hunt of sorts. And so it is a lighter season than the previous one. Um, but I think that works in its favor. And mm -hmm. Discovery itself is also, each season is one long narrative arc instead of yeah. episodic like a lot most star trek shows in the past um and i think that works in its favor here as well because they're telling a very cohesive story um that and it's it's very well paced too like each episode feels like it's the appropriate amount of information to have received <laughs> at each week um so yeah i think i am surprised at how well it works as a final season now this season was 10 episodes at 10 episodes do you feel like that was enough time for them to fully tell the story or would you have liked to have seen more or do you feel like maybe they could have done it in less I, I have only seen the first four but i think that for this story in particular that yeah the pacing at which they're moving um can be done in 10 stories um i feel like discovery always does a really satisfying job to me um of telling one long arc and then it might even work i enjoy the week to week release um but i think watching it is just as engaging binged mm -hmm. because then you get the whole the whole thing um but i do feel like one of the drawbacks of not having more seasons in general, um, not just more episodes, is that we're not really going to get to dive into those um, crew backstories of like the bridge crew. Um, like there are there are lots of backstories for like uh, Burnham and Tilly and Saru. Like their their stories are all very rich, um, but I feel like we're never going to get the full picture on like Owo and Detmer, uh, and they've been at the helm since season one. Um, which like, that's great. I'll just, I'll take it in my fan fiction and I'll let, I'll let the people tell the stories. Um, but I do feel like it is 
a slight disappointment that we're never really going to get more of their background. That is, I, I will say, like, I'm not fully caught up on Discovery. I actually stopped watching about about halfway through season three. I need to get caught up. But from what I watched, I do remember very vividly thinking to myself, man, they have all of these characters that are, like, named and that are in, like, almost every episode that I know basically nothing about. Like, Detmer had a little bit of character building uh, during, like, season one and season two. There was a little bit there with, like, her not being cool with Burnham. Uh, yeah. But outside of that, there there's really nothing. There's no expansion of those characters. Uh, and so hearing that they don't really seem to be doing that in season five either kind of is a little bit of a bummer, but maybe that's where expanded canon will come in. Yeah. Star Trek has a lot of books. So, you know, maybe oh, yeah. there'll be something in a book. Maybe we'll get a Detmer book. I don't know that they've done more bizarre things. Uh, I'm going to go so, ahead and manifest uh, an Owo and Detmer audio drama. I'm just going to speak it into existence. <laughs> I could, I could see them really... doing like a, I could see, I could see them doing something with the, with that pair specifically together. Yeah. And but, uh, you know. like Doctor Who is really good about like having audio dramas. And I think I've gotten into those very recently. Um, and I think that Star Trek I, I love the books. I have several of them. Um, but I think that Star Trek could also benefit from something like that in today's like very podcast heavy world. <laughs> I, I'm a yeah. big audiobook person um, because I don't have time to sit still. Exactly. It's like the <laughs> only way that I'm able to get through books at all has just been <laughs> totally audiobooks because I don't I don't have time or really the patience. Like I've tried to sit down and read a proper book like book like i carved out time to be like i'm gonna sit down i'm gonna read this book and my brain just wasn't able to like get into it i don't know maybe it's maybe i'm old and maybe that's like a, a side effect of it i don't know but so obviously you haven't you haven't been able to finish the the season fully but at four episodes and plus everything else that has come before do you feel that you can now that we're closer to having all of discovery properly rank where discovery falls in like the rankings of star trek of all the different series and if so where oh, would you yeah. put it? i a little bit of a, little bit of a uh, one you probably that, didn't expect to get asked that is tricky <laughs> because i first of all i haven't there are at least two star trek series that i have not finished um oh which ones are those? Uh, I haven't watched DS9 or Enterprise yet. And I know that's terrible. So I so I like Enterprise. I'm one of the weirdos who really, really likes Enterprise. So I'm gonna I'm gonna tell you that you should definitely watch Enterprise. I'm also <laughs> one of the weirdos who doesn't really like Deep Space Nine. And I know that saying that some wherever Maggie is right now, she was in chat earlier, but wherever she is right now, she's probably <laughs> rolling her eyes and like uh wishing curses upon my house for me even saying that i mean i didn't badmouth <laughs> voyager yet but uh you can't badmouth voyager in front of me that was the first star trek i ever watched so <laughs> i'm gonna then i will keep my lips sealed uh <laughs> but you know I, I feel like it's really difficult to like compare and rank each star trek series for me because they're all extremely like different from each other in my opinion so they don't directly compare um uh, except yeah. for maybe like tos and tng follow like pretty much the same like episode those format. those two are like almost direct analogs of each other yeah. so yeah but i would say as a like cohesive all five of the seasons go together situation i would put discovery in the tops of especially the new shows um because i think it tells a coherent story and i think you can you can get that through line i am someone who enjoyed all three seasons of picard but they don't all three go together in any way um yeah. so like i and i also i really love uh strange new worlds and i love lower decks and i love prodigy i 
pitting them against each other feels like picking a favorite child. And um, since Jonathan Frakes abstained from answering this question, uh, I will also abstain from answering this question. I feel like following Riker's lead on pretty much anything is a good way to go. Like if he does something, just that's just a that's just the way you should do it. Uh, I will say I am actually kind of excited to get caught up and in time, hopefully, to watch uh, season five when it drops. I just have to find the time to sit down and do it. But I'm also, I'm actually, it's funny that you said that you haven't watched Enterprise. I'm actually currently in the throes of a rewatch of Enterprise that I started this last weekend. So maybe I should wrap that up so that I can go and get caught up on Discovery. But uh, yeah, so glad, glad to hear your thoughts and glad to hear that you are seemingly positive, uh, generally positive on it. So that gives me some hope that this is going to be a, a great season overall. Uh, let's wrap the show up by taking some time to take a look here at chat because we've kind of, kind of ignored it a little bit today. So uh, yeah, screen rant over on Twitter says hi, <laughs> hello to our to our uh, our comrades in arms over there. Uh, <laughs> let's take a look here. Let's start off at the top with uh, John Lee saying, "I feel like Venom Three will make around four hundred million, maybe, and be panned by critics like the second one. Not into another symbiotic fighting Venom. I." As we don't fully know the plot yet, it is hard to say if he's yeah. going to be fighting another symbiote. I think at this point, it would be safe to guess that he probably will be. Um, there's also a lot of people who are theorizing that it's going to involve the multiverse in some way and set up Tom Hardy to appear in Secret Wars. Uh, but we will see what has what goes down with that. As far as your prediction about the box office, the 400 million, that would be, if I'm, if I'm not mistaken, I believe that would be on track with the other two. So that is a fairly safe bet. Although I feel like the Morbius and Madam Web situation might have soured some folks to the Sony Marvel movies. So I don't know. It's, like, it's up in the air. I feel like Venom is still like their biggest draw. And oh, the yeah. first two did like, really really well so yeah, they did. I, I think i think it has potential especially i'm excited to see juno temple in it so yeah that that's gonna be pretty great to see uh let's see john lee here hyped for all the movies that premiered at south by southwest like monkey man immaculate oh boy then you better jump on over to collider.com because we've got just a ton of south by southwest content that we're still <laughs> chewing through like we're still putting stuff out so get over there and check all that out they like trust me there's just so much about all the movies and different interviews and all kinds of stuff get over there and check all that out uh Steve Steve says J Lo was also good in the Cell, an underrated movie. Uh, I know that I've seen the Cell, but off the top of my head, I cannot remember literally anything about it, other than the <laughs> fact that she was in it. Uh, yeah, how about you? Do you remember the Cell? I actually haven't seen that one, but if I recall correctly, that one is an action movie. So I maybe maybe I'll rewatch it before. I one. believe, I don't know. As, again, I don't, I remember basically nothing about that movie. Uh, I think I remember the poster and that's about, <laughs> that's the best I can do for you. That was like 98, 99, something like that. I think it was before the turn of the new millennia. Uh, so it's, it's a little bit up there in years. Uh, Carlton says, at least Atlas does not have the word cloud in front of it <laughs> or the word shrugged after it. Uh <laughs> There's a lot of different words that could go with Atlas that could that could skew my opinion on that story. <laughs> uh, but we have luckily stayed away from that. Uh, now jumping into the... Uh, uh, oh, Mike Joyce here. Venom, The Last Dance. Michael Jordan would like a word. I believe in the article over on, uh, over on the website, someone made a 90s Bulls joke. So they're right there with you, Mike. Uh, let's jump into some of, some of chat's comments about all of our Star Trek Discovery stuff. Arrow saying, I fell off from watching Star Trek Discovery. I believe it's season three. So hopefully I can binge three and four before five drops as well. Yeah, that I'm in the boat with you. So we both have a lot of Star Trek to get through, Arrow. Uh, <laughs> season three's finale made me cry. So uh, I highly recommend getting... Season three getting, was... Season three in. Was, Season three was the burn, right? Yeah. Yeah. 
Because, okay, so season two was the whole Red Angel stuff, and then, like, blah, blah, blah. I'm not going to spoil how that goes, <laughs> but then you have the burn, and then season four, I have no idea because I haven't watched any of it. There's so. a, it's a new species is sort of, like, wreaking havoc and destroying planets, um, and they hmm. have to figure out why. How very Star Trek y. Uh, <laughs> Team Money says, watching Enterprise will give one faith of the heart. That song is now going to be stuck in my head for the rest of the day. So I kind of hate you just a little bit for that. Uh, so we're going to have words, T Money. Uh, <laughs> Carlton <laughs> Even also without says, having, I, s- Even without yeah. having seen Enterprise, I got I to gotta give it up to that. You know the theme song. Excellent. Yeah. Uh, Carlton says, I really didn't uh, fell with Discovery, but love Strange New Worlds and Picard Season 3. I like the specification of Picard Season 3 because I'm right <laughs> there with you. I know that Sam said that they they liked all of Picard. I did. I and did. I know that Maggie liked all of Picard. I'm not there with you guys. I'm, I'm sorry. I really liked, um, especially Season 1, because I really liked uh, Issa Briones' character. Uh, I thought that she did a great job um, and I would like to see if Star Trek legacy becomes a thing, I would like to see her character come back. Season one was, it felt like a chore, but I forced myself to finish it. (laughs) Season two, I stopped watching after about three episodes because I thought to myself, man, I hate myself, but not this much. <laughs> and I stopped watching. But then season three is like my favorite Star Trek thing that we've gotten in probably close to 20 years. So that's that's pretty pretty insane right there. <laughs> uh, T-Money's just continuing with the theme song. Anyways, <laughs> uh, Arrow says the Star Trek IP is so vast in the realm of good and bad that it's hard to pick what's best because for me, at least, there's some really good bits in all the Star Trek series and films. I think that's spot yeah. on. Yeah. I completely and the agree. Th- the thing about Star Trek is I-, I like asking people, at the very least, like what their favorite Star Trek series is, which actually, Sam, what is your favorite Star Trek series? Is it Voyager? It's actually TNG. Um, I'm a, I'm a Riker and Troy girly through and through. Um, and so TNG and then Picard season three really like gave them the ending. I think that they deserved. Um, and like the whole, that whole crew, I mean, um, and I, I really enjoyed it. So, yeah. Um, but I I completely agree with Arrow here. Like there's in every Star Trek series, I feel you'll watch the best episode you've ever seen. And then it's immediately followed by the worst episode you've ever seen. Yeah. So yeah, pretty much. And like, the thing is, is that even the, even the Star Trek series that I am not the biggest fan of, there's parts to it that make it worth watching, you know, because I am not the biggest Voyager fan. I'm not the biggest deep space nine fan, but, there are like characters, there are episodes, there are plot lines to all of that that I do enjoy and do make me go back and rewatch at least parts of both of those series. That being said, I haven't rewatched Voyager in probably 10 years, so maybe I should just watch all of it. That's that's what is it, seven seasons? That's a lot of just sitting there and watching Voyager. Uh, I, I love Voyager, and I think also, especially with Prodigy coming back and like getting rescued, uh, Voyager lives on in prodigy and i think that's um something that i personally really enjoy (laughs) one of these days maybe i'll sit down and like properly articulate my problems with voyager it's not necessarily that i have problems it's just that i don't i don't like the way that they do some things Mm -hmm. um again i don't hate voyager by any stretch of the imagination but it's just not the one that i would (laughs) choose to watch Yeah. And as far as my dis my dislike of Deep Space Nine, I've said it before, I'll say it again. I really liked Deep Space Nine when it was called Babylon Five. Um, <laughs> so that's how I feel about that. Uh so and with I that, want, I think that's oops, I do want to hear your thoughts on Lower Decks. Uh I love Lower Decks. Before <laughs> before Picard season three came out, if you would have asked me what is your favorite new trek, I would have told you Lower Decks. Yeah, I adore Lower Decks. That is that is the only show that I subscribe to Paramount Plus for. (laughs) So 
sorry paramount i'm if you're listening it's true that's the only one that i subscribe for <laughs> outside of that i i will pop in binge a series and then leave uh but yeah so with that i think that is where we're gonna end today's show uh yeah sam do you have any like any articles or anything coming down the pipeline that you want to plug or any that just came out that you'd want people to go check out i since we talked a lot about star trek i have a bunch of star trek stuff that just went up i have my discovery review um and then i wrote a couple articles from our south by southwest studio with uh, alex kurtzman and michelle paradise um so those articles are up now on collider and i have uh, an article from Maggie's interview with uh, Ed Spillier is coming up. Um, nice. So that go check those out. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So if you want to see if you want to see some more of Sam's writing, and actually, I would recommend going over to the website and checking out the full Discovery review that that they wrote up. It is like it goes way more in depth than what we discussed here. Way more like into specific points. Uh, so go over there, check that out. And then, yeah, just check out any more of the stuff that they've written over there. It is Sam is one of our many very talented writers. And so very, very happy and very glad that we were able to get you on today's episode. And we'll probably we'll probably get you on another episode in the future. Uh, if you if you want to come back, you might be sitting there going, man, this was a terrible experience. I never want to come back. I hope that's not the case. But, you no, know, it, it was a delight. I'm happy to come back. So yeah, get over to Collider.com, check out Sam's articles, check out any of the articles we have from all the rest of our very, very talented writing team. Uh, and while you're over there, also, if you see a thumbnail for an article that has a little play button in the corner and a little like time code, that means there's a video element to that article. And it's probably a video element made by me or one of our <laughs> other like very, very skilled editors. I keep saying that we have a talented team, but you know what? We very much do. We really uh, do. Get over there. Yeah, we really, really do. Get over there, watch the videos, read the articles, all that sort of stuff. We will be back tomorrow. Actually, neither of us will be back tomorrow. <laughs> I believe that tomorrow is actually Perry and Maggie. Uh, but, you know, you should still show up anyways. Same bat time, same bat place. Uh, until then, I hope you have a wonderful rest of your evening and we'll see you next time.